So training while either sick, sore, or injured is one of the things that a lot of people don't look forward to, but somewhere along the line it will happen and it's best to be prepared so that way your next session can be as good as it can be while handicapped for something like that. So let's take my leg day today for example. I intended to just do some squats, then some pause squats, belt squats, potentially some leg extensions, and then some hamstring work and eventually core work to finish off the day. So we're doing my first two sets on squats. My form pretty much went to trash due to my back soreness from two days ago during that session. I didn't record those two, the first and second set, because I knew how bad they would look during my warm-ups. So I warmed up with a bar, because for me it's important to make sure that you warm up to continue to progress instead of just jumping onto a weight. I've learned that instead of having smaller jumps, it's better to have more conservative controlled jumps. So I went from the bar to a plate on each side, two plates, two plates and 25 on each side, and none of them really felt strong, which was disappointing for me personally, but I still did my best. I started to record my third and fourth squats, those attempts, because I did my very best to try and adjust my stance, my back tightness, but both of those not only felt better, but they looked better as well as from what I'm showing in regards to this. For me personally, it's very hard for me to shoot my hips back and activate my lats whenever I have a hard back day and then plant a squat. So the reason that this was so difficult is because two days ago I had a very intense back session and then when I tried to squat today, it just wasn't there. I also didn't feel good this morning. Um, I felt very weak. The night before I had a very bad sleep and I just felt very nauseous. So for my squats, I take a low bar squat stance, but for me, my knees tend to travel a bit more forward past my toes. I used to only do high bar and then I finally switched over to low bar and I've been doing that for a few months now. And partially the reason why my knees tend to bend forward is just because A, it's my body type, B, maybe I'm still having some tendencies from the high bar, and C, maybe in general, I'm not squatting to a perfected T. However, the way that I'm doing it right now, it feels better for me, and more importantly, it allows me to keep the barbell over my midfoot, which is one of the most important things, and if I can continue to do that, I think the way that my feet are, as well as the way my back is, is completely fine. And in regards to being sore, sick, it's easy to make excuses, but for me, when I had a horrible night's sleep while I was having urges to throw up, and then waking up feeling weak with more stomach problems, it might affect your workout, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't train hard while in a weakened state like that. So after my squats, I intended to do paw squats on two plates, and while doing those, which was a shock to me, they felt extremely, and I mean extremely, easy. So that pretty much further illustrated that my central nervous system was still taking way too long to fully activate, and that can be attributed to me feeling weak. So since I was feeling weak, my body wasn't able to warm itself up quickly enough in order to get onto the next weight, and that was because my systems just weren't fully at 100%. Fortunately, which bothered me, I didn't record those because I figured I would just be way too fatigued, but I was able to do eight pause reps on 225, and this wasn't just like a half second pause rep. This was anywhere from a second to a second and a half pause reps, and after doing those eight, I felt like I could do another five or so, and I was very happy with that, but just a little bit disappointed that I wasn't able to capture that because my form felt great, my depth I know was good because I went even lower than normal. Looking back on the squats that I was doing, maybe the depth wasn't quite there. I believe that most of them I was at parallel. Hopefully in the future I can just go a bit lower, which I normally do, but today it just wasn't there. So going back to the concept of being sore, sick, or injured, you can and you should push yourself as much as you can. However, one of the most important things that you can do for yourself well, in any of those states is to listen to your body. For example, let's just say you were benching and you had three sets of five on 135, so a plate on each side, and you also feel sick and sore just to add to more of a handicap for your day. Now, of course, ideally, like I did for my four sets of five on squats, you want to push yourself to be able to do what you intended to do. However, if your hindrance is too much, you need to either lower the weight or lower the sets and reps. You still want to push yourself, but remember, you're not at 100% right now. You might be 80%, 60%, maybe even 40% of your full strength. And taking that in consideration each and every single time a scenario like this pops up will help you in the long run. 
You need to be as strong as you can and push yourself as much as you can while being safe about it in those weakened states. So that way, if you're able to push yourself in a weakened state, imagine how much you can push yourself when you're feeling 100%. For me, I got lucky and was able to push through and do all my workouts completely despite not feeling 100%. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.